At noon today, I declared a state of civil emergency in Maine. You have a reported transformer fire. I've been through two hurricanes, and I think this is worse than those were. Total chaos right now. You look out the front window, and look like Fourth July with transformers blowing up everywhere. Oh boy. for several days of being without power. We didn't expect coming here. We just didn't deal with it. Here in New England, winter storms are a normal part of life. We expect ice and snow in January, but no one could have prepared for Ice Storm 98. I'm Pat Callahan. And I'm Cindy Williams. Freezing rain fell for several days, leaving a heavy coating of ice on everything. In some cases, that coating was more than an inch thick. The weight of the ice bent and broke trees and power lines, leaving more than half of the population of the state in the dark. But it also gave the people of Maine a chance to show their true colors. The staffs of WCSH6 in Portland and WLBZ2 in Bangor led the way during this critical time, working long hours to keep the stations on the air and to provide viewers and listeners with vital information. News Center expanded all newscasts, bringing crews in early and working them late into the night. WCSH's six personnel created the Neighbors Helping Neighbors Helpline, turning the station into an emergency communications center that fielded nearly 12,000 calls. If you were in the southern Maine area and had a battery-operated radio, you may have been one of the tens of thousands of people who listened to the audio portion of our telecast on 87.7 FM. So perhaps this is the first time you will see the extraordinary pictures of this record-breaking storm. The following is a collection of the sights and sounds of Ice Storm 98. Straight ahead on New Center at noon, the driving is lousy in much of Maine and New Hampshire as freezing rain coats the roads with ice. Rod, the travel conditions will deteriorate as the radar begins to fill in with more freezing rain. There is a major ice storm headed toward northern New England. Parts of Maine, though, are already icing up. New Center's Donna Gormley is live on Maple Street in Bangor. Donna, the good news, I guess, is that the roads are a little better now in the Bangor area than they were this morning. They are a little bit, Rob. You know, for some kids, it's a day off from school. But for the rest of us, it's another day of scraping, de-icing, sanding, and salting. Now, Rob, I can't remember when we have had ice this bad before. Some areas in eastern and central Maine got up to an inch of ice. We've already got ice in a lot of areas, and the big ice storm that's coming our way has yet to arrive. This kind of weather can cause some major problems for electrical wires as well. So central Maine Power is preparing itself for possible outages later today. New Center's Ann Murray is live outside CMP's Portland operation. Ann, are the crews out already? Hi, Rob. No, not yet. A few have been out. We're going to talk to Paul DuPerry in just one moment regarding what CMP Central Maine Power plans on for today. You know, it was raining here just a few moments ago, and now the temperature has just dropped bitterly. It's very cold, so there could be a lot of icing going on even right now if you're going to head out today. As I said, Paul DuPerry is with me. He is with Central Maine Power. Paul, thanks so much for joining us. We've heard about this ice storm. How do you prepare for this type of a storm? Well, we've started at, at 2 o'clock this morning. We had a broken pole in Gorham, and that's been replaced. Uh, and what we do now is we have all our line workers inside. All the trucks are stocked, gas, ready to go whenever the uh, situation occurs that we have to fix any down wires. We'll respond as quickly as we can. Winter weather advisories are out now for the rest of the afternoon for all the viewing area as we will continue to see an increase in the precipitation and the coverage area. So travel conditions will be deteriorating all afternoon and then just go right downhill to very hazardous tonight. A significant winter storm may dump as much as an inch of ice in some parts of Maine, and Central Maine Power is preparing for major power outages. The side streets are getting to be very, very treacherous. Now take a look at why. If you check out the tree branches around the area, if you're walking, you can see that layer of ice. Well, that is what you are trying to drive on on the side streets. And people who live on homes that are on hills have been calling me for the last 15 or 20 minutes and telling me they're having a very, very difficult time even getting to their driveway, much less as we've all been talking about trying to skate up the sidewalk and get in the front door. Well, we wish we could say the worst is behind us with this icing, but that is not the case. We are going to be having problems right into tonight and tomorrow 
And Joe, these conditions are just right for an ice storm, aren't they? Yeah, really. As I said before, Mother Nature has us in a headlock right now. We've got cold air set in place near the ground. And above our heads, we're up at about 1,000, 2,000 feet, warm, moist air moving in. That's causing the rain. As the rain falls into the cold air, it freezes. You couldn't ask for a worse scenario as far as I'm concerned. For anyone hoping the worst is over, this is not a good sign. Freezing temperatures, rain, and the month of January in Maine all add up to one big mess. Crystallized tree limbs and sagging power lines. It's like we're literally living in an ice box. This ice has public works crews busy. In Portland, salt and sand trucks have been on the road all day and all night trying to keep up. Paul Gilmore says if you're driving the main roads, you're probably okay. But take a ride down a side street, and it's a whole different story. People that have four-wheel drives and people that have regular cars think that they can't slide, and you will slide. Driving is one story. Trying to walk on this is another. Sidewalks are like ice rinks. The problem is most of us aren't Dorothy Hamill. So no matter how you're getting around, the bottom line is you're not getting anywhere fast. One thing is for sure, this same ice that's a tough scrape tonight is going to be an even bigger headache in the morning. Central Maine power is very busy tonight trying to keep up with widespread power outages. So far, about 10,000 outages have been called in to CMP headquarters in Augusta. More than 80,000 people are in the dark at this hour as this slow-moving winter storm bears down on Maine. The worst of the um, outages happened between midnight and 3 a.m. when things really turned bad as far as the icing goes. And apparently it's just going to get worse before it gets better today. If you haven't lost your power, you may just lose before the day is out. At the beginning of this ice event, if you will, it was the Bangor area getting hit the hardest with thick, thick ice on the roads and windshields. Let's find out how conditions are shaping up this morning with News Center's Chris Nielsen. The ice has accumulated here. It's, it's thickening up. It's on branches and power lines. So we are hearing some reports this morning of scattered power outages. Much of Auburn is without power this morning. Much of mine at Mechanic Falls, Turner, Sabattis, as I mentioned. Sabattis had to pull their road crews because they couldn't see the power lines that were down on the street. That's how bad it is. This ice storm has knocked down countless trees and power lines in Maine. Tens of thousands of people are waiting for their electricity to come back. And the icing isn't over yet. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rob Caldwell. We knew this ice storm was going to be a bad one, and it has delivered. Large parts of Maine are all but paralyzed this noon. Trees are down, roads are treacherous, and power is out. New Center's Roger Griswold has been tracking it since early this morning. Not over yet, is it, Roger? Absolutely not, Rob. Unfortunately, a bad situation is going to continue to get worse throughout the afternoon. I think the worst part of this storm will be felt this afternoon into tonight, although the full effects of the storm aren't going to wind down until sometime tomorrow. Okay, it's going to be a while. You might want to make some other arrangements because it might be a day. This is the busiest office in the state right now, the communication center at Central Maine Power Headquarters in Augusta. The calls are coming in by the tens of thousands, reporting outages in one of the worst ice storms anyone here can remember. Crews are all over the state fixing this very problem, down power lines, broken by tree limbs covered with ice, a real mess. And in an ironic twist of fate, CMP, the source of energy for the entire state, lost its power too. That hasn't happened in the seven years Markish Kanian has worked here. At least a once in a decade type of ice storm. And there are people in this company that have worked here 30 years that have never seen the kind of damage, at least in the greater Augusta area, that they saw driving to work this morning. In fact, the last time we had an outage of this size in Maine was back in August of 1991 in Hurricane Bob. 180,000 customers lost power then. Central Maine Power says this storm may surpass that. The forecast is calling for more ice in the next 24 hours. So if you lost and regained your power, you may just lose it again. CMP has 82 crews out and almost 50 trucks coming in from out of state to help. But restoring all power may take days. Based on the forecast, at least in interior Maine, the icing is continuing, and, um, and I don't think it's going to improve a whole lot tomorrow. So 
you know, even if we make some progress in certain places, we may suffer new outages. So we're, you know, we're looking at a, a slow improvement in terms of weather, which, you know, is not going to help our effort at all. These are the hardest hit areas in order, in order of the areas that have the largest amounts of outages. Lewiston, Augusta, Bridgeton, and Rockland. And as you mentioned, in all CMP figures, it's about 205,000 people in the state of Maine who are without power this evening. And that figure continues to rise despite the fact that Central Maine Power now has an estimated 130 crews out on the roads trying to fix the problems. That's updated from the story that we heard Ann tell us about earlier. Now, the problem of downed wires and poles is so widespread that crews simply can't keep up with it. For example, workers will spend more than an hour working on fixing some downed lines, only to be called back again because limbs and branches have once again pulled those wires down to the ground. Earlier today, CMP was hoping to have all the electricity restored by the weekend. However, they now say that it's looking that's like some people may be without power until the middle of next week. Earlier in the day, Governor Angus King declared all of Maine to be under a state of emergency. The governor joins us now by phone from Augusta. Governor, what does this mean for the average person who's at home now, maybe doesn't have power or is worried that the power is going to go out? What does that state of emergency mean? Well, technically what it means is that it allows us to deploy the nat National Guard resources. I declared the emergency at noon. Uh, this now looks like uh, the worst electrical emergency we've ever had in the history of the state. This ought to be operation neighbor to neighbor tonight because we've got to look after one another. And if you're home warm and and have uh, power or have your heat on or have your wood stove, think about somebody down the street that may be elderly or disabled and check on them in some way, shape, or form because uh, as it gets colder tonight and if the power goes off and there's no heat, this is no joke. Central Maine power officials are calling this a storm of historic proportions. More than 200,000 CMP customers are without electricity tonight. And despite the fact that CMP has more than 100 crews working to restore power, the number of customers losing power continues to rise. Just looking down this small road in the town of Green, you can get a feel for just how massive the job facing Central Maine power crews is. On this road alone, two poles snapped, sending power lines down a 200-yard stretch of pavement. Workers say they haven't seen anything like this before. Just overwhelming at this point? Yeah, it is. It's unbelievable. This is the worst we've seen. Worst we've seen. How long have you been on the job doing this? I've been at this for 10 years. 10 years, and this yeah. is the worst you've seen? It's the worst I've seen. Even Hurricane Bob was nothing compared to this. Heavy ice is pulling entire trees down on power lines. The weight is too much for the poles to support. Crews are working as fast as they can to restore power, but the problem is so widespread, they haven't even gotten to some trouble spots yet. Crews are also finding branches dragging back down lines that they've just repaired. Central Maine Power supplies electricity to 45,000 people in the Lewiston Auburn area. 40,000 of them are without power. Workers say they'll be doing just two things the next several days, working a lot and sleeping a little. Central Maine Power says it now has 130 crews out trying to restore power. 50 of those crews have been called in from other states around New England. Now the company is asking its customers to please remain patient during these difficult times, but they do acknowledge that outages could continue to occur even as the ice begins to melt and starts falling off trees. And that's something that may not even occur for another several days. So right now it looks like they'll be working on restoring power at least until the middle of next week. The sound of sirens filled the air in Lewiston, Auburn today as emergency crews responded to one crisis after another. New Center's Susan Kimball was there. As ice-covered tree limbs came crashing down, so did power lines just about everywhere. You could see the transformers blowing up, trees falling down. Most of the people in this area woke to the same scene Mike Marcotte did. Their homes darkened by a power outage, their cars covered with ice. Late for work, but I'll make it. Fire trucks and police cruisers raced from one trouble spot to another with no end in sight. When we caught up with this crew at about 8 a.m., there was already a backlog of more than 25 calls to the Lewiston-Auburn Emergency Communications Center. They're trying to keep up, and it's just unbelievable over there. 
because they're handling both cities and everything and total chaos right now. Here in the town of Sabatis, there isn't a light on, not in the local police station, not in the local market, nowhere. As a matter of fact, things were so bad here at one point this morning, road crews were taken off the road because there were so many power lines down. As CMP hustled to get those lines back up, people who live here scraped their way through the day. Ron Jakes has one piece of advice nobody can argue with. Stay inside. Absolutely stay inside. Amen. By Friday, January 9th, the impact of the storm had reached its peak with downed trees blocking roads. All over the state, power lines and utility poles fell, cutting off electricity to more than half a million people. There were other hazards, carbon monoxide poisoning, hypothermia, and food spoilage among them. Warding off the cold and staying safe became the number one priority and a seemingly never-ending struggle for many families. Enter Neighbors Helping Neighbors, a concept that grew into a statewide grassroots effort of Mainers looking out for one another and managing this crisis by working together. A state of emergency is still in effect, and the number of people with no power is growing and growing. My ride into work was not good. I saw nothing but uh, trees, scattered tree limbs down, even drove over a few power lines down. You don't even see them until you really get up on them. And that's really the dangerous thing. And this storm is just immobilizing everybody. It's kind of bringing things to a standstill. I'm here on Maple Street, and this street is actually barricaded. And I just got off the phone with Bangor Fire Department, and it's just like many other streets in the city, barricaded. And that's kind of putting a stop to uh, road crews getting out and treating these roads. I do have to say I can see State Street from right here. And that's looking pretty clear. But again, it's the side streets that are really uh, in danger right now. And it's just crews are out trying to fix these lines, but it's a ripple effect. They get one line up, and the tree limbs are just so heavy, they bring another one down. So they're just going to continue to try to restore power to people. There are scattered outages here in Bangor, also Brewer as well, the Hamden area. You know, it's just, it's really creating problems for folks. So I just want to say be careful and be cautious and just take it slow going. To Wyndham we go now. News Center's uh, Colleen Harry last night uh, reported as uh, some of the shelters, particularly the one she's in in Wyndham, were opening up. Uh, a lot of people spent the night there, Colleen? Actually, we're told about 20 people, including some kids, spend the night. They're actually still sleeping. I peeked inside. I checked the first floor to see if anyone's uh, stirring yet, but no one's quite up. I did talk to one woman. She spent the night. She said simply because of safety reasons. You know, it's human nature to try to weather storms from our homes, but sometimes Mother Nature is a lot tougher than human nature. And this ice storm is certainly challenging a lot of people, forcing them out of their homes. No power, no heat, no hot water. And that's why emergency crews open the shelters across the state. There are about 30 of them right now. And here in Wyndham, as we mentioned, some people are still inside sleeping. But emergency workers say, for those of you with power, please take some time. Check around your community and see how your neighbors are coping. How has it been at the shelter? Pretty good. Pretty good. Mary Elwell says she and her grandkids had no choice but to leave their Wyndham home and spend the night at the shelter. The Philpots came this morning. They left because they had no power at home. Precious power, Venetia Philpotts needs for her respirator. But whatever the reason, parts of the public safety building now look like a slumber party. How has it been? Mm, shelter, struggle, but we'll manage. Robert Barnhart and his family spend the night. Tell me about the cots. Um, they're pretty comfortable. Does that surprise you? Um, yeah. Why? What did you think coming in? Well, I saw these and I thought they were like lawn chairs or something. But after a good night's sleep with Pete, the kids are entertaining themselves. Are you starting to miss your home, though? Yes. What do you miss? I'm going to school. It hasn't been too bad an experience having to stay at the mm -mm. shelter, huh? Nope. And then we get free Burger King. <laughs> and you can't beat that. How much is it? Anything uh, else? Two boxes of, uh, looks coffee. Breakfast at Tiffany's? No. Probably better. It's one thing having to spend the night away from home, but the people staying here at the shelter say it's tough, almost irritating, not knowing how long they have to be here. I'm hoping I'll be here for a week. <laughs> be a little hard for a whole week. How long do you think you'll last here? Until it's over. Here in eastern Maine, this area is serviced by Bangor Hydro. They are reporting major 
pockets of power outages. In fact, they don't even know at this point the count of customers who are without power. I can tell you the areas they are working on. The entire west side of Bangor is out. Brewer and Hamden as well. Also the East Machias area in Hancock County. Surrey to Brooksville are without power this noon. Also Dedham, Lucerne, people there are in the dark. And also the entire Umaine area in Orono north of that to Castiga and beyond. So you can see it is a very widespread problem. And this is what they're encountering when they come to those areas. It's, uh, they're facing down tree limbs, wires in the middle of the road. They've just snapped off. They're just too heavy from all this ice. Now some trees are splitting right in half from all the pressure. And the Bangor Fire Department is really getting lots of calls from folks about broken branches and limbs that are out of their door yards. Now again, we just heard the warning, don't pick them up, don't touch them. They do want to caution people, do not touch those limbs, do not try to remove them from the power lines. There are so many people in Maine and New Hampshire who have already been through so much hardship that we hate to tell them that things are about to get worse, but in the short run, they may in some places. Yeah, in fact, Rob, the, the storm itself has been off in Kentucky for the longest time, and it's finally on the move, but it's coming through this afternoon and we got one more bout. It's going to be a tough punch because temperatures have dropped below freezing, including areas like Portland that had been above freezing yesterday throughout the day, right on the edge. Right. Now the cold air is sunk in, and we've got some more problems ahead. But good news is on the horizon. We can say goodbye to this storm tonight, and then the cleanup process will continue with sunshine tomorrow. Central Maine Power says crews are going to work through the weekend and into next week to get power restored. But at this point, the ice continues to thwart the best efforts of the repairmen. The ice just keeps snapping tree limbs as fast as crews can clear them away. As fast as they're getting it together, it's coming back down. Um, one of the biggest problems we've had is the storm hasn't ended yet, and it's really hard to get a feel for uh, or start the restoration project, uh, process in full swing until the storm is actually over. As bad as the ice storm has been in Maine, it has perhaps been even worse in eastern Canada. The storm there is being called the worst in decades. Six people have died. Three million, three million are without power. The province of Quebec has been hardest hit. Things are especially bad around Montreal. 3,000 soldiers have been called in to help out. Many Quebecers won't get their power back until the middle of next week. Lewiston Auburn perhaps is, is the worst hit in your service area. Uh, how bad is it there, and how bad is it throughout all of CMP's customer area? This is the worst disaster we have ever faced in our company's history. Uh, there's been more destruction of our lines throughout the state than we've ever experienced before. What's the biggest obstacle that your crews face as they're out there? Is it the weather? Is it the, simply the amount of work to be done? What is it? Well, both. In fact, one of the things that's worst about this storm is that it's a continuing uh, 36, 48-hour period of time with continual bad weather, so we don't have a chance to get started on catching up. So that as soon as people are putting the lines back together, they're breaking in another place because the trees are still falling. So it's a, we, we, won't, we keep sliding behind, and we're not going to start making a lot of progress until, uh, I think, Saturday when the weather is supposed to turn a little bit better. I know that you're doing the best you can, but my question is, after the obvious priorities, which you've already listed, hospitals, public safety, nursing homes, then what are the next set of priorities? Do you begin in the center of a community? I have family in Waterville, and they're hard hit. Uh, do you begin in the center of the town and then work your way out? And what is the anticipated time uh, frame that you have for restoration of service? Okay. It depends on what we restore. It depends on the configuration of the circuits. Uh, just because you live in the center of town might logically be the place you'd start, but really where we have to start is at a substation and work out from there. Uh, we do work on the principle of trying to restore to the greatest number as quickly as possible, and that tends to be urban areas, but it also depends on the configuration of the system. Because of the magnitude of this storm, it's our feeling that, and the length of the storm, it's our feeling that it's going to be several days before we have everybody back online. And when you're doing your individual planning, for example, with your family in Waterville, you should count on the fact that it could be several days before we get uh, everybody back on. 
No, I think the media sometimes overdoes the weather stories, but this one is real. Uh, all along the way from Westbrook to Wyndham, you can see trees bent over, snapped off at the top, and you know you think about what people are going to have to go through because this isn't going to be over in another 12 or 24 hours. The fix on this is not fix one and we get 40,000 people back all at once. There's a lot of onesies, twosies that need to be done, and that means it's going to be a long time before the power is back up. Please, let's get across to people that this has got to be neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor night in Maine. Uh, check on your next-door neighbor or on uh, the elderly person down the street uh, mm -hmm. because the, we got the shelters, we've got the resources, but my concern is people uh, not either not knowing about it or sort or, of being confused, not knowing what to do. Or, go down number, and knock. or number three, that old main stubbornness not wanting to go. Yep, that's right. That's right. I'm independent. And I think a lot of people think it, it, it may just, you know, be a few hours. This is going to be a few days. And uh, I don't want people in the cold tonight. So, uh, you know, everybody, as the night settles in here in a couple of hours, uh, think about the people in your neighborhood who might uh, bear a, either a phone call or a knock on the door and either take them over to your house or uh, get them to one of the shelters. For Central Maine Power, it's the news they've been waiting to hear. Line crews working around the clock to restore electricity are finally making some good headway. As of late this afternoon, 237,000 homes and businesses remain without power. That's still a huge number, but it is down from 275,000 this morning. Now, News Center's Kevin Kelly has spent the day with CMP crews around Augusta, where things are particularly bad. He's live in Portland now. Kevin, this must be extremely frustrating for the workers. Rob, it is frustrating for those workers, as you said. They've been working for days trying to get this electricity back on. But what they really need, they say, is a break in the weather. Of course, that doesn't seem like it's coming tonight. For the latest on just how many customers are without power, I'm joined now by David Flanagan, the president of Central Maine Power. You were just this afternoon uh, in a conference call with lots of your regional supervisors. Can you give me the, up, the update, the latest? That's right. We're beginning to make a little bit of progress, and we're cutting back on the number of people who are out just by a few thousand, but I think we're down around the 250,000, 240,000 mark, and we're very hopeful we'll make some more progress tomorrow. Extremely frustrating, though, that to be in this situation. It sure is. We just heard a limb crack behind us. The problem is the storm just doesn't quit. It keeps on coming. We do work. We get things strung back together, and then it breaks all over again. We were talking about tomorrow. What's going to happen tomorrow? Hopefully, we're going to get a break in the weather, and at the same time, we're going to be deploying the most crews that have ever been seen in the state. Uh, and we're going to work a 20-hour day, weather permitting, and I hope we can make some real progress tomorrow. Utility crews keep chipping away, but the power problems prove persistent and stubborn as the ice storm goes on. We now have 12 broken poles. For CMP crews, this is a bad dream come true. Supervisors from all over central and southern Maine calling in to report just how bad it is in their area. At CMP's headquarters in Augusta, these green lights mean trouble spots. As you can see, there's a lot of trouble. We need some kind of break from the weather because even if we stop getting this frozen precipitation, we still have all that ice hanging over our power lines. That's not good news for line workers out on the street. Every day is a fight in the battle, a battle against frozen tree limbs and downed utility poles, nearly 100 in Augusta alone. These CMP workers are working side by side with crews from out of state. Frustrating work, but for these workers, a win in the battle is another step closer to winning the war. Do you feel like you're at least you're getting ahead of it? Well, we've got to suck it back on. This will be the third time if we get it going today, so it's just a you put it up and it comes down. Actually, it seems a lot of what is up is coming down. This tree came crashing down around Tammy Hall's house early this morning. Hall, who's been without electricity and heat for two days now says she doesn't believe things could get much worse. Hopefully we'll get the power up and running again soon and, and we'll be back in business. We're Mainers, though. We can handle it. We'll, we'll get through it. But even that tough Maine spirit can sometimes get a little weighed down. Everybody is working as hard as they possibly can, but the trouble is the storm keeps going on. After visiting with shelters last night, traveling with power crews early this morning, Governor King came to the Maine Emergency Management Agency's headquarters to get an overview of the state's worst power outage ever. 
The situation is so bad, even this emergency command post is without electricity. Everything here is being powered by generators. It's here where the state police, Department of Transportation, American Red Cross, and the National Guard coordinate all their efforts. So all of the various agencies that need to respond in an emergency, we can pull them in here to one location, uh, centralize our effort, everybody knows what everybody else is doing, and in a consolidated fashion, address the needs of the people in Maine. In this one room, they can keep tabs on all of the shelters that have been set up and what their needs are. They have direct access to Central Maine Power and Bangor Hydro, and they can track all of the roads that are now shut down. Uh, Norway area, the Naples area. Um, you can see the swath all through um, South Central Maine. Um, the southern part of the state uh, was hit more last night. This is a round-the-clock operation until further notice. Emergency workers will be calling this place home for a while, catching a few hours sleep whenever they can. About a mile away at Camp Keys, members of the Maine National Guard are also mapping out their strategy. So far, they've been delivering generators throughout central Maine and helping evacuate people from their homes. Soon, they'll begin clearing debris from streets and setting up giant water tanks in communities that need fresh water. Guard members say they're preparing for the long haul. Uh, you very seldom have more than a day, maybe two days. And now, uh, you know, where does this end? And uh, we really don't know. And uh, the temperature and the, the weather really isn't helping us either. Down trees and power lines have caused tremendous havoc throughout the state. News Center's Chris Fraschini was down in areas of York County today where some of the damage was severe. He has this report. There have been easier obstacle courses in truck driving school than on some of York County's secondary roads. Down trees and power lines have forced the shutdown of several of them. In some areas, the debris stretched for miles. This is what one man saw as he videotaped the damage. Oh boy. I was under that tree. And I wanted to see some action. So uh, I was looking for some falling branches on this side of the road, and that tree uh, gave me some action. Some of the worst areas of York County are in Limington and Limerick. The advice there from authorities is for people to stay off the roads unless it's absolutely necessary to go out. Yeah, I'm out trying to get some kerosene from my heater. The sign says welcome to Limerick, but what is around it is not a very welcome sight. Parts of Route 11, the road we're on now, have been closed off because of all the debris that's left in the road. This road behind me has been down trees, but we've, it's passable. You can crawl underneath the trees. Most matter of fact, most, probably the thing that is most outstanding is you see birch bark trees. The white birch are cracked and split across the road as well. Cleanup crews and power companies are working around the clock to clean up this mess. In areas of York County, emergency oh, management officials work. say it could take days, possibly weeks, before all the debris is finally cleared away. The storm has been a rather strange experience for thousands of Mainers. Diane, what have you seen? Well, I'll tell you, it's dark on one side of the street. There's a few lights behind me, and it is so weird out here because we can hear the trees falling. A huge tree fell just behind us in the woods someplace, and we heard branches or something falling across the street. I, I actually don't feel terribly safe here. And I'll tell you, I do not think that New England has seen the likes of these past few days ever before. Three days of ice building on ice, covering western, southern, and central Maine and eastern New Hampshire, causing immense damage. Oh boy. The biggest hardship, no power. Central Maine power crews have been working round the clock, now side by side with out-of-state crews, repairing lines, sometimes returning to repair them again when yet another tree falls. Resourceful New Englanders have been trying to make the best of a bad situation, whether clearing debris or keeping each other entertained. Don't pick on me. 15, 2, 2, 4. People without heat and power are being urged to stay with friends and relatives or to pack up their bedding and whatever else they might need and head to the closest shelter. We had 700 or 1,000 people in shelters last night, but I think a lot of people thought it was going to be over in a few hours. Fire departments have helped evacuate people who are no longer safe in their homes with no heat, some with wires draped across the lawns. We've got 14 to 15 more at the manor, and that should wrap. You got anyone else? 
And so by 8 o'clock in the morning, we should see partly to mostly sunny skies in southern sections. It may help melt all the ice. It won't help clean up the mess. I just heard another tree fall behind me. And I hear also that there are going to be about 200 utility crews, about 150 tree crews out all weekend. They're going to be getting some help from Massachusetts, from Rhode Island. Hopefully that sun that Joe was telling us about will help them to make a dent. But as we've been telling you, we've got our work cut out for us, everybody around here. All right, Diane Edwards, okay. stay safe tonight. Okay. The number of power outages across the state has apparently peaked, but crews are still trying to make headway. As of last night, I believe 230,000 Central Maine power customers in the southern, central, and western Maine areas still did not have electricity. Of course, Central Maine power crews worked all day yesterday trying to restore as much electricity as they could. Today, it says it will have more line crews out here than ever before. Of course, you have to remember this, they're saying, is the worst electrical, electrical outage in the state's history, so they have a lot of work ahead of them. There are out-of-state crews here from Massachusetts and Rhode Island helping CMP crews get down power lines back up where they belong. Now, um, in Augusta yesterday alone, CMP says it had 100 utility poles that had just split and come down. Of course, with more tree limbs expected to fall today, if the wind does pick up, that's going to mean a lot of work ahead for them. Let's go back outside. Catherine Pegram is uh, monitoring the situation in the uh, greater Bangor area. And this has gone on longer in Bangor than it has anywhere else. It's really been a week-long event at this point. Uh, I'm sure folks up there, Catherine, are pretty happy to hear that the temperatures will be warming up a bit. Yeah, they're happy to hear that, but they're weary to know that they're probably waking up and not having any power this morning, just like I did. We talked a little earlier about how some of the power outages are scattered. You can have power on in your house, your next door neighbor's house is dark, the, street, the house next door has lights on in the living room. It's kind of a cruel little joke that Mother Nature is playing. And I'm a prime example of that. I'm also standing in a prime example of that. I'm at the corner of Mount Hope and Fern Street. You can see down the street from me, lights are on here on Mount Hope. If you take a look up the street, Fern Street, the street lights are also on. There's a porch light on. But take a look down the other side of Fern Street, completely dark. All because these trees are falling on power lines, they're scattered in the streets, and, that, and those scattered tree lines are causing a problem for Bangor Public Works. They're working very hard to clear the streets and move the trees out of the way. They're hoping for a week of some clear weather so that they can actually do something with those broken branches. If not, I just talked to uh, some folks at the Public Works Department. They said it could be till spring before they can clean up some of the mess around here. Central Maine Power estimates that 250,000 customers in southern, central, and western Maine are still without electricity. But the good news is CMP crews are taking advantage of the sunny weather. They're out in full force this noon. News Center's Kevin Kelly is live in Falmouth where line workers are hard at work. Kevin, they must be anxious to get the power up and running. They sure are, and if you talk to anyone at Central Maine Power, they'll tell you they're working as hard as they can to get everyone's power back on as soon as possible. It's an eerie sight out here this noon. Last night we talked a lot about the sound of the tree limbs, the ice-covered tree limbs that were crashing down. Well, this noon, it's the ice itself that is coming down. The sun is out enough for that ice to come down. And like Roger said, it's very dangerous out here. A lot of people need to be careful if they are outside. Look up and see what's, what you're under. Of course, fortunately, right now I'm not standing under anything that's going to fall on top of me. If you uh, take a look down the street here, you are going to see some tree crews that are out this noon. Now, getting the power restored is a multi-step process. Central Maine Power just can't come in by itself and get the lines back up where they belong. They need some help, and these tree crews are out here right now clearing limbs that have fallen and branches that have fallen onto the power lines. We're here on Mountain Road on Blackstrap Mountain in Falmouth where things are really bad. Lots of ice, lots of tree limbs down, and lots of people without power. They have generators. They're calling it the hum on the hill here in Falmouth. As you said, 250,000 Central Maine power customers still without power this noon. That represents roughly a half a million people, so that's a lot of people without electricity. Speaking with the people up here on the hill, they say they have never seen anything this bad. They're hoping they never see anything like this again. But you know what? They have a positive attitude. They say, this is winter. It happens. Hopefully never like this again. But they're just happy to see that this ice is finally starting to melt. I said it yesterday, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take credit for being the first one to ever use the phrase, terrible beauty. That, that first shot as we just came back uh, from commercial was certainly a very pretty, almost postcard-like shot. But uh, the, uh, the results 
are anything but postcard-like, as uh, we've heard from Bangor. It looks like a war zone in parts of Maine today. It's Neighbors Helping Neighbors. Our helpline, 800-464-1213-828-6666. A special News Center lunch break broadcast on WCSH 6 and WLBZ 2. If you're stuck and don't know who to call, what to do, where to go, we can help too. That's all part of Neighbors Helping Neighbors. I gotta admit, we stole the line from my guest here now. Oh, Governor good. Angus King uh, said yesterday uh, that it was uh, Neighbor Helping Neighbor Day, so we just kind of added those S's on so we wouldn't infringe on your copyright. <laughs> How you doing? You just great. I've, uh, I've had better weeks. but oh, uh, Haven't we all? Uh, hearing, the, hearing the melting on the roof, though, is, uh, that's music. The message is, and I think this is an important one, just because it's sunny, it ain't over. Right. Uh, they've got a long way to go. Uh, they lost ground yesterday because the storm continued. Uh, and there's still going to be a lot of people without power tonight. So if you're thinking that it's over, uh, be thinking about tonight. Two things, shelter and neighbors. Now, the story about the cots well, in Lewiston. Last night, well, I went over to, Mary and I went to the Lewiston shelter. I'd gone to a bunch of shelters the night before we went over to Lewiston. They were short of cots. And we were going back and forth calling General Adams up at the emergency management. Where do we get cots? They, we finally found some. But... Somebody at Camp Keys remembered that they had a huge roll of bubble wrap, you know, the yeah, stuff. Yeah, sure. So <laughs> they cut it up into six by three foot, and three, 300 people last night slept on bubble wrap. Tonight, WCSH6 and WLBZ2 are serving as a statewide clearinghouse for people seeking help and information about the ice storm cleanup. Governor Angus King drafted the stations into service today after participating in our Neighbors Helping Neighbors program, hosted by New Center's Jim Crocker which included volunteers forwarding calls for help, he even brought in the National Guard to help answer people's questions and concerns. And uh, I think it's helpful to have people to have a place to call with individual questions. Uh, information is part of the battle here, and uh, this is a way to get it out, and I appreciate uh, CSH willingness to, to uh, work with us. I haven't nationalized the station, though. There's, that's, rumors to that effect are, are absolutely untrue. Members of Maine's congressional delegation are taking a personal interest in all of this. Senator Susan Collins is in Bangor today, and I believe she joins us now by telephone. Senator, are you there? Yes, I am. Thanks for being with us. I'm glad to be with you. First of all, Maine will be seeking federal help to recover from this storm. The governor is going to ask the president to declare a federal disaster area for Maine. What role can you and members of the delegation play in making that happen? I've already written to the president asking that he grant the governor's request as soon as it's officially filed, which I think will be on Monday. This is something the entire delegation will be, will be fighting hard. I think there's no question that we qualify under the law, and it's just getting the, the process going. FEMA should be sending a crew to inspect the damage, I hope, as early as next week. People relying on battery-powered radios <clears throat> excuse me, for information may have to look for an alternative. Several radio towers in Maine have gone down because of the storm. A 500-foot-high tower atop New Gloucester Hill owned by Down East Broadcasting is toppled by ice. That effectively knocked out three radio stations, WKZS Mix 96.9 and 99.9. WTHT 107.5 was also using that tower. Radio towers are built to withstand 80-mile-per-hour winds. That drops to 70 miles per hour with a one-half-inch diameter of ice. But today, engineers found much more than that on the tower's guide wires, almost five inches. We have here, we have a hole that my finger will fit in where the guide wire used to be. And if you, as far as the specifications are concerned, it should be able to withstand about yay much of ice. Just too much ice, it couldn't handle it. Despite another sunny day, the fallout from the ice storm of 98 is far from over. In the Lewis and Auburn area, many of the old power poles are simply rubbish now. Pieces of wood to be sawed apart and tossed aside. Central Maine Power says at least 80 power poles snapped in the Lewis and Auburn area alone. Four of them are on Marshall Avenue in Auburn. What's it look like for this road? Not good. <laughs> How long do you think? Don't have a clue. Be a while? Oh, yeah. Takes a long time, set poles. One wire with two of others wrapped around it. A 
As power crews scramble around the clock, the people who live here are simply making do. So Tom Campbell is among the lucky the ones. Road. He has his own generator. Uh, we had a problem yesterday, but the generator is up and running now, and we were up all last night. So if we can get this power back, we'll be in good shape. Where the poles aren't down, the lines are. Roads are closed, and debris is everywhere. Crews from as far away as Virginia are cleaning this up as fast as they can. Jeff Day came up Thursday morning from Providence, Rhode Island. He says people here have been great overall, but don't ask him when it will all be over. I got tired of all the questions, so if you look at that side of the helmet, it says howdy, and that side says don't ask how long it's going to be. <laughs> Even though the sun is out today, Lewiston Auburn is still covered in ice. It will likely stay this way for days. Storms that are selling generators are doing an awful lot of business today. People are buying the machines just as fast as stores can stock them. And while generators can provide much needed relief to people who have been without power for several days, they can also be dangerous, even deadly. Over the last couple of days, dozens of people have been treated for carbon monoxide poisoning from running generators inside their homes or garages. And at least two people have died. Experts say there is no way to safely run a generator inside, no matter how well ventilated your home is. The last man that we treated put the generator in an open bulkhead and gone out of his basement, put a fan in his basement to blow up out of the house. Um, he walked down to turn off this thing and made it upstairs and collapsed. Tens of thousands of people across Maine are in a situation they are all too familiar with, waiting for the power to come back on and having no idea when that'll happen. Chris, how are the line workers making out today? Well, Rob, it's coming along slowly. Uh, they are making progress, as you said. We'll start with the good news. Central Maine Power has restored electricity to 107,000 homes. The bad news, as you mentioned, 168,000 customers are still without power. Now, those are the figures we received this morning around 8 a.m. CMP was expected to put out another advisory any minute now to update those figures. Uh, last night it was 177,000, and as we said right now, 168,000. So you can see they are coming along. However, we can tell you that there is still a great deal of work to be done. And for some people, it could still be a week until they are back on. More than 1,000 people are spread throughout the state working to restore power, clearing away debris, uh, tree limbs and branches to allow the CMP crews to get in there and get to the downed wires and poles. Now we're told that some tree clearing companies have come in from as far away as Virginia and Ohio. The hardest hit areas continue to be Augusta and Lewiston with about 30,000 people without power in each of those two communities. Now I'm up here at Blackstrap Mountain in Falmouth and as you can see behind me the trees are still coated with ice. We can hear constantly behind us the uh, ice falling, tree limbs falling, and really to give you an idea, this is really what's hampering CMP. You can see the ice just caked onto these limbs. And even though we had some melting over the weekend, it was very cold, as Kevin Mannix said, overnight, and the ice is continuing to be a problem. Central Maine Power, uh, even though they are working to get people back online, they are still reporting new outages. So this continues to be a problem, and as long as it's cold, uh, we'll still see this. There you go. Volunteers and supplies are needed. There is a critical shortage of blood. Call the American Red Cross, 874-1192, if you can help. And that's in any way. I mean, that's, you know, that's transporting goods for them from, from a headquarters to a shelter. It's working in a shelter. It's giving blood. Uh, please, please give them a hand. All of the work the Red Cross has been doing the last few days has greatly depleted their funds. Over the last few days, the Red Cross has spent nearly $200,000 helping people get through the storm. The spirit of Neighbors Helping Neighbors was shared by Maine's corporate community. A $15,000 donation from the Gannett Foundation was used by our own station executives to begin a fundraising effort for the American Red Cross. To get the community support means we can be there. If not, all of these people would be out in the cold. There wouldn't be anything for them to shelter a safe spot to go to. This effort brought forth hundreds of thousands of dollars from Maine's corporate community. Fleet Bank's president and CEO David Ott played a major role in initiating this campaign. Hurry up and wait. That's about all people who still don't have power can do.
As of 4 o'clock this afternoon, 112,000 customers are still in the dark. The hardest hit area now is in Bridgeton, where over 21,000 customers still do not have power. In Lewiston, the number has dropped to 19,000. And in Augusta, 18,500 customers don't have electricity. In the Waterville District, 11,500 homes are in the dark. And in the Rockland-Belfast area, the number is 10,500. Western Maine is still one of the hardest hit areas of the state. We sent New Center's Chris Rose out to that neck of the woods to see how crews are progressing and how people are coping. With more wintry weather in the forecast, crews from Baltimore Gas and Electric made their way up Route 302 in Naples, cutting down branches that hung precariously over power lines. Right, you got to clear up anything that's hanging over it, you know, because with the wind coming in later today, you know, that could snap off the limbs and with any extra weight on them, you know, that's just going to hurt more. The ice storm slammed Bridgeton and the community surrounding it. Although power has been restored to downtown, many outlying areas are still in the dark. Things are especially frustrating for about a dozen or so people who live on that stretch of Elm Street in Bridgeton. They do not have power. However, they do have power just a few doors down. And the folks up there know, since there are so few of them, they are a low priority right now. Now there's a transformer that went at the bottom of the hill that runs up to these six houses, and there's just no way they can get to that. It's not important. It just takes such a while to stir and wow. cook. So the people in this neighborhood try to make do the best they can. With one baby and another on the way, Sue and Cal Benfield have consolidated their living quarters into one room, right by the fire. I mean, everything's here, everything that we need, the heat, um, we have the food, we cook over the wood stove, over the fireplace, and it's all right. It's tight, but it'll do. I've learned that I love my wife a lot and I love my baby. <laughs> you know, we've gotten pretty close. Um, so there's some good so, things that's come out Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, so doing the best we can. They've also learned a lot about their neighbors and how caring they can be. They've depended on them for food and wood. And they've relied on their portable radio and news center for information. Crews are out working, but they are not going to be helped by the weather today. While people like the Benfields wait indefinitely for the lights to come back, people in other sections of Bridgeton got some good news today. Carl Eaton was without power for five days. Since 20 minutes of 8 Thursday morning, then uh, it just came back, say, about an hour and a half ago, or an hour. How are you feeling now that's back? Oh, quite a relief. It's a feeling that can't come soon enough for many other people in western Maine. Well, moments ago, President Clinton declared 15 of the 16 counties in Maine federal disaster areas. The federal funding will be used to repair public facilities damaged in severe icing, wind, and rain. Vice President Gore will be in Maine on Thursday to survey the state's ice storm damage. Gore will likely tour the Augusta and Lewiston areas. This storm has brought people and competitors together. Last night, all four television networks in Portland worked together to put on a live one-hour telethon for the Red Cross. The money raised will go directly to the Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. The agency has already spent more than $300,000 on food and shelter for the storm victims, and the meter is still running. Vice President Al Gore comes to Maine to see the ice storm devastation with his own eyes. The vice president said this is one of the worst and more unusual natural disasters he's ever seen. Because of that, he says the president has ordered that $28 million in block grant money that was supposed to be sent here in the spring be sent now. And he says disaster relief is also on the way. Are you getting enough sleep? The vice president's first stop in Augusta was to the emergency management agency and a visit to the workers who have spent tireless hours helping to coordinate the emergency response effort to the ice storm. Earlier this week, President Clinton declared much of the state a disaster area, paving the way for federal dollars to help state and local governments pay for expenses related to the storm. Today, Governor response. King asked the vice president but for more help. Requested, or I would like to request at this moment the declaration of a disaster area for the next level, which is individual federal aid for homeowners and individuals. Approved. <laughs> but it is still unclear whether federal help will be coming for the one entity in the state that has spent more on storm-related costs than anyone else, Central Maine Power. For the first time, CMP's president shed some light 
on the initial price paid for the storm. David Flanagan says CMP must replace 2,500 broken poles and 1,000 miles of ruined wires. The company has already spent $6 million on equipment, but the real cost will come from labor, and they haven't even begun to add that up yet. Flanagan hopes to get some federal money to take the burden off of ratepayers. Inevitably, the people who benefit from the restoration of the power have to share in the cost of that restoration. What's encouraging is the discussion of the possibility that uh, as a national disaster, maybe we can get some national assistance. Vice President Gore pledged to do whatever he can to help, because he says getting things back to normal in Maine is in the country's best interest. But you know, the sooner Maine is back on its feet, the stronger our country is. It's just a basic philosophical principle as part of the glue that binds us together as a nation. As you've already seen, Mainers didn't wait for federal help to get their lights back on and their lives in order. This area is quiet now, but almost from the start of the storm, volunteers stepped up to answer phones here in the WCSH 6 sales department. Our Neighbors Helping Neighbors helpline. As many as 2,000 calls a day at the height of the disaster. And that effort paid off, both for those in need and for the volunteers. I felt really lucky because I only lost my power for four or five days and I got my power back on and I've uh, heard so many stories on the news and in the paper of people that had um, a lot worse experiences than we did and I really just felt the need to help somebody else. And the staffs at WCSH6 and WLBZ2 also went above and beyond. Engineers worked against the elements to keep us on the air and others set aside their own problems for the greater good. In short, my lasting impression of this storm is the commitment the employees at WCSH6 have had. Uh, they've come in uh, with their own personal problems at home, uh, power outages in, in the Lewiston area, not being able to get out of the driveways in Buxton, but they found their way into, into the station here because they, they knew what they had to do, and that was to get the information out to our viewers. What sticks out the most in my mind is the call I got from a woman who said, you're our only source of communication, and we're listening to you on the radio, and we're looking forward to every newscast that you do because it's the only link that we have to what's going on. And that, to me, was just... Blew me away. The recovery continues as people repair their homes and put their lives back in order. The financial cost of Ice Storm 98 is staggering. More than $100 million for the utilities, the cities and towns, and the individuals picking up the pieces. But the emotional cost will linger. However, through the generosity and cooperation of Maine people, Ice Storm 98 is not a tragedy, but a triumph. Folks offered a helping hand to one another, and that's not soon forgotten. We at WCSH6 and WLBZ2 are proud of our co-workers who went the extra mile to keep you informed. And we're proud of the way the Gannett Foundation and our own station executives initiated the fundraising campaign for the American Red Cross, an effort that was quickly echoed by other generous businesses and individuals. As spring arrives, the scarred landscape will begin its own healing process. But for years to come, the memory of Ice Storm 98, Neighbors Helping Neighbors, will live on. When the world turned and trouble rose in In the heart of a storm, in the cold and the wind It's a time we need our everyday hero See us through till the sun shines again and the spirit shines neighbors helping neighbors on the darkest night everyone is your friend so here's to all our everyday heroes In times of need, they'll be here again. 